basic things. So again, being a servant leader is going to be really essential in how you frame your stories. Then again, this is not just the only way you can frame your story, but this, you always have to think about the person reading your story. When they are reading your story, what do you want them to know about you as a person? Being a servant leader is something that is essential for them to be able to understand the work you do and your value as an individual. So the other type of leadership um, that I have is um, what's called everyday leadership. Everyday leadership, we all do that. We just don't know we do that. I usually give the example of, if you're thinking about everyday leadership, everyday leadership is the thing, the little thing that you do every day. By opening the door, as I mentioned earlier, you open the door for people to get, come to the door, say thank you, and you just go by your business. You don't know them, they don't know you, but it's just an act of kindness that you put forth that day. You have somebody cross the street, or you, you made a joke, somebody smiled. That day, when you wake up from your house, everything was going wrong for you. You probably cry, you were upset, and then you show up to school, and one of your classmates or one of your friends has made a joke and it changed your day completely. We all have been in that, those type of situations. You, the person making that joke and making that person smile, you are practicing everyday leadership. You just don't know it. Because you're making an impact on somebody else's life just by that small act of kindness. The one thing that I'm gonna charge you with, if somebody, in, if you are in that situation where somebody put forth an action that helped you, to make a better decision that change your mood or help you in any way, oftentimes we don't take time to tell them thank you, right? Because we just enjoy the moment and we continue going by our daily business. I'll charge you to start saying thank you to those people who have done something, even if it can be something small, really tiny, but that has a, a really positive impact on you. Because when you tell them those things, guess what you do? Everybody likes to feel good that they are doing something that's positive. They're going to have that feel good, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to continue. They're going to even try to boost it up to help more people feel good about themselves. And when those people are running their aces when it comes to uh, this, they, that's something that's going to be the back of their mind when they're writing those aces. They're going to talk about how they put to forth an action, a small step that changed a whole lot of people. I want to hear that. If you change somebody day yeah, completely by just a small action, if you write a you know, scholarship kit that's related to that and you put it for, I want to read it because I want to see what kind of person you are. So again, servant leadership and everyday leadership are some uh, things that are very essential. And the last thing that I say about lead, everyday leadership is you just don't know who is paying attention. Everything you do every day, somebody's looking at you. So the person can make the decision and say, you know what, this young man, this young lady, every time I see them, they always do these different things and I really appreciate that for them. You know what, I wanna be like them. So I'm gonna try to be positive, I'm gonna try to emulate some of the things they do. Again, you don't know it, but you are making an impact on somebody. And that somebody, uh, you don't know, again, it might be some just your colleague, it might be the president of the college, it might be somebody else who will open other doors for you just because of the everyday relationship you have in you. So that's something you need to keep in mind. And again, it's start with reflecting on your own experiences. Take time to reflect because we don't do that enough. When you reflect on your experiences, they allow you to be able to really think about the impact you are making, the different things you are doing. Then you can tell your story. Early in the morning, uh, one of the presenters say it's really hard to, to talk about ourselves. It's a cultural thing. We are not raising our cultures to talk about ourselves. We can boast about other people and how great they are, but when it comes to ourselves, you're like, um, um, I don't know what to say. Okay, I guess if you say so, that's how we behave. But really, believe me, you need to start thinking of critically about your experiences and how to tell your story. You can be the greatest person in the world, but if everything you do, nobody knows about it, then nobody's going to think highly of you. And it's not about boasting, it's just about telling your story. And if you learn how to critically think about your experiences and tell your stories, these essays that you're going to be writing for this scholarship are going to come to you very easily. And that's where you have to start from. Just put down all your experiences and start thinking about them and how you're going to package that in terms of your um, story. So now, 
with all those things say, anybody here think they, uh, they, they know what type of thing they are now? Which one? Serving? Oh, and all of it. I like that. All of it. You can be servant leader and also an everyday leader. You, you can be all of those things. It's all about knowing how to package that and tell your story. So here are some of the attributes that I want you to think about in order to be an effective leader. Effective leader usually have these things. And when you're talking to somebody who is a leader, who is an effective leader, you can sense all these things. Passion. Passion is something that when you are passionate about something, the way you talk about it, everybody knows you are very passionate about it. And that also will reflect in the story, in your essay you are telling, because people can sense the passion. You need to have purpose. You need to have vision. You need to have self-belief. You have to believe in yourself. Oftentimes we have a lot of great ideas, but because we don't believe in ourselves, we keep those ideas. You have to start believing in yourself. And effective communication, emotional intelligence. I usually like to spend a whole workshop on emotional intelligence because it's essential to making you a better person and a better professional and a better leader. And then you have reflection that will allow you to think about your experiences and being able to package them well. And then finally, you have persistence and compassion. So these key attributes, I think that you can use as work and look at your own of their experiences and see where you can find these things and then being able to write a story around all these key attributes. And when you present that to anybody that's reading it, they're going to really enjoy your story and they will be willing to give you that scholarship that you are applying for. So again, leadership is a very essential component in terms of how you write your story and how you present your story. So those are the uh, key things that I want to quickly talk to you about today in terms of leadership. Any questions for me? Uh, okay, great. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So thank you very much for giving me your attention and hopefully this helps you for the start. Thank you so much, Dr. Kuapo, for that beautiful presentation. Very informative. The students said it. They didn't have any questions. Everything was very clear, right? I think we have a question here. After he left? Yeah. Is it a different, on a different topic? No, no, no. Tell me. Go ahead. I'm here. I'm not here. Just go around. Basically, the point was to learn about leadership. What are leadership? Okay, so she's trying to reaffirm whether the point of his presentation was to learn about leadership. Yes, absolutely. Why is that? This is very important. I don't know if you noticed the connection that he made. I'm sorry, pretty much with every slide. How important it is for you to develop your leadership skills and the connection that he has when it comes to applying to scholarships. I'm so sorry, I have to interrupt you. You have to repeat everything over again. <laughs> I was saying to say it in a nutshell, he's trying to say that you don't know who you are or where you stand. No one's going to want to support you financially. No one's just going to give somebody money just because they say, give me money. And that you have to know how to market yourself as a brand to say, I'm this, this, and this, support this, this, and this, because it'll benefit in this, this, and this way. Give it up for her. What's your name again? Aisha. Aisha, give it up for her again. I think that me, not even I said it better than Aisha. Throughout my whole presentation, I spent 30 minutes trying to say that to you, and she, in five seconds she said it. Okay? Um, our next presenters are going to be some students who have been past recipients of scholarships, I want you to learn to hear their experiences applying to scholarships and how receiving those opportunities, the awards, have changed their lives, uh, both inside and outside of school. We also are going to receive members of the student government and host community college. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank them again because of the delicious refreshments that we're serving. They co-sponsor this. So thank you so much. 
And let's give them a round of applause for that too. You see all the iced coffee, hot coffee, and everything that's on those tables? That's the student government. And they're going to be talking to you about not only what they can do for you as um, students supposed to community college, and the different scholarship opportunities that every semester they develop for you and they offer you. Um, they're also, some of them have also been, become recipients of scholarships. They have applied at different moments, so they're going to share both experiences. Um, and they're going to share how resourceful they can be and helpful they can be to you. I'll leave you with this beautiful crew of people. Um, let me call Judy. She's hiding there in the back. She's been assisting me the whole day um, in the scholarship orientation. And I'll tell you a little bit about her. And then I'll tell you about Samika. Um, Judy came to my office, I think it was in her second semester. Um, if you don't mind me sharing that, you're, she's an international student. And while the assumption is that international students are supposed to have the money to pay for their tuition here, that's not always the truth. So she's, she's been struggling a lot all throughout. But she will tell you, because she can say that better than I, than I can even try, later on she will tell tell you all a little bit about her story later on, how we met, she came to my office, and the rest is up to her. Me, Samika, we met last year in the scholarship orientation. She came, I believe it was for the morning session. One of the sessions, scholarship orientation, that's where we met last year. This is my beautiful daughter. This is Marty. Um, say hi. She's shy. <laughs> right? Um, we met last year, and Miss Tamika didn't like something about the way that we set up everything here, something um, with the sign and sheet, and I'm sure that you had the same issues today, or probably similar experiences, if you had to wait online for too long, I'm so sorry, I apologize. Um, and she decided to write me an email, and she expressed her complaint, her feeling, in there. <laughs> I found that to be beautiful, I invited her to come to my office, we spoke, and ever since, she comes to my office or she sends me an email asking about which scholarship she can apply to. And she has received a few of them already. And she continues to apply. Every time she sees something open, every time she finds an, an announcement about a different scholarship, she's like, Miss Lipko, I want to know more about this one. When can I come? How can I apply? So that's what you all have to do. And I leave this beautiful group of people here. So I, OK, wait, you want to say something? <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Kelvin Pineda and I'm the Student Government Association President. So I just wanted to let you know within the next two weeks we'll be opening three scholarships. One being a very new one that we just designed with our help of uh, COVID Severus and some of our other senators as well. So I'm going to read to you the Merit Scholarship and the Need Based Scholarship for right now. Uh, so the Student Government Association Merit Scholarship is now available for the host of students and is earned through academic achievements. Upon eligibility, eight students will be the recipients of a total of $500. And I will read the eligibility criteria. So must maintain the GPA of 3.0, demonstrated commitment to community service, must obtain a letter of recommendation from either host of faculty, staff, work or community service agency with a minimum of 250 words and maximum of 500 words answer one of the following questions how will graduating in your current area of study help you make an impact slash difference in our society under the current administration and what inspired you to pursue your major the next one is the need-based scholarship so the need-based scholarship is an opportunity offered with the aim to help alleviate financial burden to students with a present tuition balance. So upon eligibility, students will be awarded between one and five hundred dollars. So the amount of awards that will be given out is varies. Eligibility must have proof of due for tuition, have a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.0, with a minimum of 250 words and maximum of 500 words. Answer the following question in an essay. What are the challenges you face as a whole social student? And the supplemental question, describe your financial need. With that being said, I'm also the recipient of two scholarships within the last month. One being the Finer Family Fund, and the other one being the Circle 100 Fund. There is an immense amount of resources within this school. 
And I urge all of you not only to apply to our scholarship, but visit our wonderful scholarship coordinator, Maya Lipfield. She's both very intelligent and very, very kind-hearted. She'll walk you through the whole process like she did for me. So I was one of those students that one time I applied for a scholarship, I didn't get it, and then I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to apply again. But you have to put yourself out there, right? It's like when you go for a job interview, you might not get the first one, but you never know if you don't apply for the other ones, you're going to get them. The next two that I applied for, I got them. And honestly, uh, it helped, it helped a lot because I didn't receive my full tap and pell this semester and I also had to pay a little bit out of pocket for tuition. So that was my own fault. I decided to go part-time because I wanted to serve my full year as Student Government Association President, so a small price to pay. But I was here breaking my head thinking, oh, how am I gonna pay for the tuition balance that I have? How am I gonna buy my $300 worth of books and also, how am I going to survive for the rest of the semester without the money that I'm used to getting? So, uh, I went to Maki, and she was, how do I say, one of the most helpful things that I've had happen to me this semester, and I've known her since my inception in the school. But, like I said, I applied the first time, I didn't get the first scholarship, and I was a little bit disheartened, but that, she told me, don't let that stop you. So I applied to these two next ones, and I got them within a month. Not only was I able to pay my tuition balance, not only was I able to get the books that I needed for school, but I also had a little bit left over to help me survive throughout the semester. So with that being said, I urge you, please, not for me, but for you, and you know, if you have children as well, you know, put yourself in a position to win. Put yourself in a position to further your academic career without actually stressing yourself out and thinking, oh, where am I going to make up this money that I have either for tuition or books or for rent? And also, apply for our scholarship, right? We give away $12,000 worth of scholarships. It might sound minor, but it's a good amount of money that either we don't have in the moment in our pocket that we could easily have. All you have to do is actually put in the effort and also seek the resources. So with that being said, I already told you about two of the scholarships that we're going to offer. I'm going to pass off the mic to Gova so they can explain the newest scholarship that we're offering. Hi, everybody. My name is Gova Tavares, and I'm a center, but I'm also I'm receiving an uh, many scholarship here to host us. And I don't know, maybe many of you know me because, you know, sometimes I'm a little bit annoying to everyone. You know, maybe you have seen me around, running around, smiling, annoying the staff, annoying Maji a lot, because I'm always scared of the office. And, you know, well, I'm more than that. I'm a writer, I'm a poet, I'm an inventor, and I'm a human rights advocate. You know, all right, that's enough about me. You know, let's talk about what I'm supposed to be talking here. You know, there's like money that we get to give out, but then if you don't apply with us to those scholarships, that money just gets lost, you know? So, saying that, that's not because of me. I get, I've gotten around like $8,500 worth of scholarship in the past two years. <laughs> I've received a Rising Star scholarship that was through the external website scholarships. Um, I received the Honorable Hector Leo Scholarship by Cajun Network, that was uh, of the scholarship that Hotus offers. I've received the Ramon Jimenez Memorial Scholarship of Social Policy and Practices, the Burns Element, and Leadership of Social Justice, and many more. And the reason why I've gotten so many scholars, you know, we'll be, be getting many more, is because I'm proactive on my education. You know, I do not wait until somebody tells me, like, oh, here, there's money. I'm not going to wait for that. Also, I'm not going to wait for the government to just decide, like, oh, yeah, generation should get money for your college. I'm not going to wait for that. So, since day one, I created a college profile that our wonderful Manjo Lettos talked about earlier. That's a great tool. Day one, I created it, and after that, I came across of the tool that she was explaining, recommended opportunities, 
And see, because of that little tool, I applied the first scholarship, scholarship that I didn't know. And I got them. And you know, honestly, I didn't get that scholarship just because of my beautiful face. You know, or my GPA. Because I was a decent GPA, you know, so three points. It's a decent GPA. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a decent GPA. There's people here that have definitely better than me. But you know, I've gotten those classes because I show up for my community, you know? And I've done many, many hours of volunteering. I'm there for you guys. I'm, I try to be present. Now, as my wonderful president said, the members of the SGA, we create this scholarship as a hardship fund. So basically the scholarship, as the name tells, is for students who are maybe going through like a hardship and need, but need money ASAP. That scholarship is gonna be, as soon as you submit, you're gonna process it, and then you're gonna get the money. And that's for students, that there was a need for students that do not have a GPA. So anybody can apply, or even a student's in probation who may not get GPA, who may not, oh, I'm sorry, who may not get a financial aid. Additionally, I've been looking for ways to get money for undocumented students. Now, I'm not asking you for, for your thanks or anything in return. My point telling you this is because I believe that you don't, know, you don't know need to be rich to give back to your community. You can either donate your time, get other people to donate, get you, or get yourself in a position of power, or just by raising your voice, calling your representatives. That, that helps. You know. I know all of you have what it takes to get even more scholarships than me. Show up and represent your community and then apply for scholarships and you'll see the efforts are never going to go unnoticed. People in power are always watching. Your small acts of kindness and courage. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Andre Thompson. Um, my position is a senator. Um, gotta bear with me here. I, I, this is all in my head, really. All right, so as the president said, Mr. Kelvin Pineda, I would like to mention that student government is not offering scholarships as well as metro cards to the students here at Hostos. Our job is to serve the students and part of that is to help make the students' lives easier and to make campus life more enjoyable. I have currently applied to certain scholarships including the Circle of 100 and the Finder family. So all I can tell you is just be honest, answer the questions, you know, to your best abilities, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Tanika Casavari. Um, and I'm really honored to be here to talk to you guys about my experience and my experience winning scholarships here. So like uh, Ms. Mrs. Lipfield said earlier, I sat in the same seats you guys did. It was my first semester. I was really upset <laughs> because I didn't have the printout to get in, so I had to wait even though I was here early. And so I did send an email to Mrs. Lipfield and what really upset me was some students left. They got frustrated and they left. And it was my first time coming to anything here. And I say that to say this, advocate for yourself and for other people. Like if I didn't advocate for myself and for others, I wouldn't have the connection that I have today with Mrs. Lipfield. And so immediately after being at organization, I emailed her. I set up an appointment with her, and I ran into an issue. My issue was that I didn't have a GPA. And without a GPA, I, I didn't qualify for a lot of scholarships. But what I did do was I was prepared, and I was positive. I came with all my bills, and 
I was like, I need money, I got rent, I got two kids, and I need assistance. And even though there was not scholarship opportunities for me then, she was able to refer me to Mr. Wander, who offered me an opportunity to receive money from a Haven fund. So there's money out there, not just scholarships, but the, the, the opportunities that these people around you are offering, you need to be like a sponge and soak it all up because that's what I did. So the next semester, all I did, I worked hard on my GPA. The next semester I had a 3.9. And I was like, hello, I'm a fine for this, 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 this. Every single scholarship that came out, I didn't care if it said bilingual. I know you said, if you're not eligible, you're gonna apply, I apply. I don't care if I was eligible. Because you know what, all of that is practice. I know how to make deadlines, I'm gonna win. And so if you wanna win, do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? I, in one semester, I received $1,800. I'm getting ready to graduate, and I could say without those scholarships, I wouldn't be graduating. And my kids are gonna see me graduate, and that's the most happiest thing that I can feel right now. You know? Seriously, do what you gotta do. There's gonna be scholarships, you're gonna apply for 100, you might get back one. But you know what? So what, that's one that you didn't have. That was money that you didn't have to really work for. You just, you just show them who you are. Show them who you are, your words mean everything. Write it down, go to the writing center. Everybody around you is here to help you. Surround yourself with people that's gonna uplift you and, and motivate you. Before I came here, I listened to Steve Harvey, I listened to Oprah Winfrey, I listened to Michelle Obama, I listened to motivating things because I knew I was here to speak to you. I wrote this down, but I'm not looking at it because I need to talk to you from the heart. The same way that I won those scholarships writing is the same way I'm gonna talk to you. And that's the same thing you guys need to do. If you wanna win, win. Do what you gotta do. I believe in all of you, I believe in myself. I'm gonna continue to advocate for myself and for all of you guys. I'm not on the Student Government Association, but I won the, school, the Student Government Merit Association um, Award. I've won the Bronx Element Leadership and Social Practice Award, and I'm not gonna stop. I've already applied to all these scholarships. That's up there. And I'm glad that you guys have three coming up, because I'll be applying to those two, so do the same. <laughs> be hungry, okay? <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, if I do any mistake, please excuse me, but I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but Margie motivated me to speak about my story. And so I was born in the Dominican Republic, but I, from, I, I'm also from Italy. Then, then in Italy, I just was dedicated to work. But my dream was always to finish school. One day, I asked a professor, that I, that I knew her and, and asked her to help me, that to give me information to finish my school there. But then immediately, it is another culture. And she told me, why do you want to finish the school? You're already old. And that also discouraged me. Then I came to this country and I saw something different, another culture. And I thought, okay, so let me come here and study here in the United States because it, was, it is my dream. And at the beginning, everything was okay, but uh, after the second semester, I started to have problems to pay my school. So I have to pay more. Uh, my tuition balance is more expensive than for the student just because I am a professional student. And I have something to I should say, so I'm talking. <laughs> I'm telling you so from the, from the bottom of my heart. So, and then I had two jobs, and at the same time, I was a full-time student, but suddenly, I lose the two jobs. The first one was in a restaurant, the restaurant closed. The other one was an internship, so all the students had to leave the job because they, they closed the contract with, with the students. So, and I saw myself facing addiction problems. And then I have to decide my education or pay my bills. And 
we, we live in a country that there are a lot of people here. But at the, at the end, in the time when, when you need, you only can find a few people that can help you. And one of those people were Margie. I told her my story, and she motivated me. There were other people who told me, so drop out of the school. But she told me, no, we're going to find out a solution. And so yeah. <laughs> I applied, I started to apply to a student scholarship. And after seeing myself facing a vision problems, I saw myself uh, at the Yankee Stadium because I applied for a student scholarship. And I spoke the truth at the beginning. I, I was ashamed, but then I saw what that, when people saw your situation, they want to help you. So in last summer, I was in the Yankee Stadium. They were giving me the scholarship that I received for them. And right now, I received another scholarship that he got in hostels, and they will cover my whole tuition balance. So. Um, So I will be able to graduate. And at the beginning, so I, I used to ask God, so why do I have to face those difficult situations? But at the end, I, I understood that those these processes just give me strength. I just was thinking about to okay, I just want to, to end a bachelor degree. But right now I say that I want to end the highest liberal education. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a beautiful and moving story? Yes. yes. So you know now what to do. After you finish here, you're going to set up an appointment with me? Yes. Is that right? yes. I hope so. I hope to see you. Um, now we have one more person to come and talk to you. I, I have to apologize because we uh, went off the agenda, but two of my speakers didn't have, a, um, they faced some emergency issues and they couldn't make it here. But we still have one more speaker left, that's Mr. Jason Lito. He's the coordinator of the Leadership Academy here at Brooklyn Community College. And he's going to speak with you about community service engagement and how that affects your eligibility to different scholarships. Um, opportunities out there. So let's welcome Mr. Jason. Can you hear me back there? No. Yes. If you're in trouble, you can't hear me at the end and it's over. It's not going to happen. All right, so uh, I want to start off by saying uh, welcome. Uh, we've been doing this for 12 years. So the Leadership Academy sponsored this from the very inception. And the first year that I was here, this is my daughter too. <laughs> um, the first year that we were here, a, la a very nice lady came up and stood here with three pieces of paper and said, these are the scholarships that we have for you. And then for the, proceeded to talk for the next hour and 55 minutes about the Hostel Student Leadership Academy and why you should join. That's when we had nobody. I said, we will never ever do that again. And this is the result that you are part of a group of about somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 to 320 people today who came here uh, and got a lot of information, a lot of resources, and are now capable of actually going right now, as soon as you leave here, you can go and apply for a scholarship. Is that correct? Yes. There you go. So that's why we do it, um, to give you guys this opportunity. And then you have the resources that now are now available at the college which is a real scholarship coordinator, not somebody who you go to their office and say, I need a scholarship, and they say, oh, you look nice, I'm giving you a scholarship. That doesn't happen anymore. You actually are judged based on your merits. So what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna spend my five minutes, the idea was that I said, we, don't, we took five minutes to talk about scholarships at the first meeting, and then the rest for uh, Leadership Academy, and I said, so I have to have my five minutes back at the end of this program to talk about the Leadership Academy. And I'm going to be very simple about this. We run a very uh, unique program in all of the City University of New York. We are very special. We don't just represent this college or this neighborhood. We represent the entire university. And we have gone out over the past 12 years 
and given to the university the best that we can give. And the members of this society have gone on to do extraordinary things in their lives from the start that they had here. Whether they've got whether they've gone to specialized universities and colleges for free, Columbia, Stanford, NYU, you name it, we've sent somebody there, or they've gone on to get wonderful jobs or had unique experiences, Peace Corps, serving as a United States diplomat, working as an anesthesiologist, all of that comes from our little group. The things that we do, our volunteer projects throughout the course of the year, we do 52 volunteer projects where we go out in the community and actually put our hands on people meaning we touch their lives. We feed them, we give books to children, we sing to the elderly, and we have done that over and over again, and every year we do that 52 times. Sometimes we do it here on our campus where we touch the lives of other students. Every year during Thanksgiving, we give out 60 meals to 60 families for Thanksgiving. And that's the type of work that we do. And then the other part that we do is I prepare you to be leaders in whatever field you're gonna go to. So there are leaders in every aspect of life. Leaders start in the home, right? So the best leader, one of them is here is my wife, right? She's a great leader in the house. She leads our two children. And one of the greatest experiences that I've had here is at doing my job is that some of the people who came to me and said, and some of the people say this to me, I can't do it, I have four kids, and it's just too much, and I have a job, and I have all this guy. My, my favorite stories are those, where people come to me and say they couldn't do it, and then they do it, they embrace it, and they see the opportunity and it, and it flowers into something extraordinary. Where it's not just this one step, where it's actually making a difference here. But all of a sudden now they're making a difference everywhere. In their church, in their home, in their borough, in their school board, wherever it is that they go, they're still making a difference. And you as leaders will make that difference in engineering, in science, in education, in medical fields. And we are developing leaders for the future and for right now. So when we do our workshops, I bring nationally recognized speakers on a weekly basis to talk to you about the things that are important to you now, the issues that are facing us now, so that you can understand that there is value in the steps that you're taking each and every day by walking in the door and seeing